Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will move on from reception of modern science in India to the post-colonial science policies in India and we will end our lectures, end this course itself in the section on science policies in India. Okay. Initial evaluation of western science. As a, as a knowledge system in relation to um, uh, Indian culture uh, influenced the perspectives on modern science and technology that the Indian intelligentsia developed that we have seen in the context of building scientific institutions in India. I mean in the context of reception of modern science. In India. Okay. One can refer to, one can infer two paradigms of thought as to the question of the implantation of modern science and technology in India during the colonial era. One was led by no less a person than Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi with his vision of Khadi, homespun cloth. The other stream was led by Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru along with Mokshagundam Vishweshwaraya, Subhash Chandra Bose uh, and eminent scientists like Meghnath Saha and Homi Bhava with a vision of rapid industrialization. As a result, there were tensions between the custodians of traditional knowledge systems in relation to modern science and the supporters of uh, modern scientific knowledge which gave rise to uh, the debates over khadi versus modern manufacturing industries, indigenous technology versus uh, imported technology for manufacturing, agriculture versus industry, centralized versus decentralized planning, uh, small scale versus large scale industries, pure research versus applied research and so on and so forth. Despite initial reservations about the transformative potential of modern science and technology epit epitomized by Gandhi's perspective and the possibility of promoting living traditions of knowledge in India, it became increasingly clear, uh, uh, clear that modern science and technology had to be given a prominent place in, uh, in the process of nation building in the realms of economy, culture and polity. The debate was however, on the relative importance to be given to agriculture and, and industry and the scale on which modern science and technology had to be deployed. One sees a clear alliance between the political elite and the scientific elite drawn from different linguistic, religious and caste groups, most of whom were educated in western science and technology in conceptualizing the role of modern science and technology in India, in, in, in uh, modern science and technology in nation building itself. In the visions of most of the nationalist political elites and scientific elites who shared the view what science is and its potential to transform consciousness and production systems, anti-imperialist and anti-colonialist ideologies were the common elements that created the alliance between the scientific and political elites during the colonial. In the case of western nations, the alliance between science and politics was forced in situations of war and imperialist expansion. Whereas, in colonized nations such as India, the, the such alliance between science and politics was forced as a response to imperialism and colonialism and the urge to build an independent nation free from imperialist yoke. 
imperialist exploitation, which forced the alliance between political uh, uh, elites, scientific elites um, and other sections of the Indian intelligentsia. Okay? I mean industrial elites. If you look at uh, uh, suppose the, the, the way TIFR was built, it was the vision of uh, uh, Nehru, Bhava and the Tata. I mean the alliance between the scientific, political and industrial elites of the country. Okay? The value system which placed modern science and technology on a higher pedestal vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the traditional systems of knowledge guided the science policy in post-colonial India as reflected in the scientific policy resolution of 1958. Okay? Now, from, from here onward, what we will do, we will discuss the scientific policy resolution of 1958, then the technology policy statement of 1983 and the science, technology, science and technology policy of 2003 and then the science, technology and innovation policy 2013 and within this policy of science, technology and innovation policy of 2013, we will also discuss the question of IPR, trademark, copyright and so on. Okay? And then we will end this course here, okay? uh, after discussing uh, the uh, uh, and then we will discuss only uh, from the very beginning uh, what we have already discussed. Okay? Now, let us start with the scientific policy resolution. The scientific policy resolution of 1958, which is which was a byproduct of the alliance between the scientific and political elites. Uh, in the post colonial phase, which of course started in the pre col I mean in during the colonial period, this this SPR shortly I mean uh, the scientific policy resolution of 1958 indicates that the key to national prosperity apart from the spirit of the people lies in the modern age in the effective combination of three factors. What are those three factors? Now, technology, raw materials and capital of which technology is perhaps the most important since the creation and adoption of new scientific techniques uh, can in fact make up for a deficiency in um, natural resources and reduce the demands on capital. But technology can grow, can only grow out of the study of science and its applications. Okay? The dominating the, 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 the dominating uh, uh, feature of the contemporary world is the intense cultivation of science on a large scale and its application to meet a country's requirements. It is this which for the first time in human history okay, has given to the common individuals in countries advanced in science a standard of living and socio-cultural amenities which were once confined to a very small privileged minority of the population. Science has led to the growth and diffusion of culture to an extent never possible before. It has not only radically altered individuals material environment, but what is of still deeper significance, it has, it has provided new tools of thought and has extended the individual's mental horizons. It has thus influenced even the basic values of life and given to civilization a new vitality and a new dynamism. It is only through it is only through the scientific approach and method and the use of scientific knowledge that reasonable material and cultural amenities and services can be provided for every member of the community and it is out of recognition of this possibility that the idea of a welfare state has grown. It is characteristic of the present world that the progress towards the practical realization of a welfare state differs widely from country to country in direct, relas in, in direct relation to the extent of industrialization and the effort and resources applied in the pursuit of science. The wealth and prosperity of a nation depend on the effective utilization of its human and material resources through industrialization. The use of 
human material for industrialization demands its education in science and training in technical skills. Industry opens up possibilities of greater fulfillment for the individual. India's enormous resources of uh, manpower can only become an asset in the modern world when trained and educated. And it is, it is explicitly uh, this policy uh, uh, which was one of the major reasons for the creation of IITs in India, Indian Institute of Technologies. And, and, the, and this, this policy, this policy resolution suggests that science and technology can make up for deficiencies in raw materials by providing substitutes uh, uh, or indeed by providing skills which can be exported in return for raw materials. In industrializing a country, heavy price has to be paid in importing science and technology in the form of plant and machinery, highly paid personnel and technical consultants. An, or, an early and large scale development of science and technology in the country could, could therefore, uh, greatly reduce the drain on capital during the early and critical stages of industrialization. Science has developed at an ever increasing pace since the beginning of the 20th century, at least uh, in the advanced countries. And the way it has developed uh, since the beginning of the 20th century, so that the gap between the advanced and backward countries has widened more and more. Because backward countries, when I say, I mean they are basically colonized nations. It is, it is only by adopting the most vigorous measures and by putting for uh, pu I, I mean uh, putting forward our utmost effort into the development of science so that we can bridge the gap it is an inherent obligation of a great country like india with its traditions of scholarship and original thinking and and its great cultural heritage to participate fully in the march of science which is probably mankind's greatest enterprise today. The, the government of India has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the government of India, uh, in accordance with the, these formulations, decided that the aims of the scientific policy will be first to, to foster, promote, and sustain by all appropriate means the cultivation of science and scientific research in all its aspects. It may be pure, it may be, I mean pure means basic, it may be applied or it may be educational. To secondly, to ensure an adequate supply within the country, within India of research scientists of the highest quality and to recognize their work as an important component of the strength of the nation. That is why the system of awards, uh, uh, rewards, recognitions, they came up in Indian science, okay, among the scientific community in India. To, to encourage, thirdly, to encourage and initiate with all possible speed, okay, uh, programs for the training of scientific and technical personnel on a scale adequate to fulfill the country's needs in science education, uh, agriculture, industry, defense and so on. Okay. Fourthly, to ensure that the creative talent of both women and men is encouraged and finds full scope in scientific activity. And finally, not finally, but last but one, uh, that uh, to encourage individual initiative for the acquisition and dissemination of knowledge for the and for the discovery of i mean i mean knowledge in an atmosphere of academic freedom okay this 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 component of academic freedom is very important okay when academic freedom is uh, is under fire it is our utmost responsibility to rise to the occasion to to uh, to give a rebuff to to uh, to give a rebuff to those who try to squeeze academic freedom. And, and finally, in general, to secure for the people of the country all the benefits that can accrue from the acquisition and application of scientific knowledge. Okay? The government of India decided to 
pursue and and accomplish these aims by offering good conditions of service to scientists and according um, uh, uh, and 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 uh, provided them with honored positions by associating scientists uh, with the formulation of policies and by taking such other measures over a period of time but but and and this policy resolution was also framed if you look at uh, deeply the first prime minister of indian nehru he was also influenced by uh, the way science and technology developed in the erst in the erstwhile ussr okay soviet model of science and technology okay that's why you will find wherever the 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 aim of science was mentioned the aim of science also uh, was to maintain equality of opportunities to do science equality of opportunities to evaluate of any knowledge form uh, academic freedom freedom to dissent and so on okay then what happened after the scientific policy resolution of 1958 and thereby we uh, we uh, by the time scientific policy resolution was uh, enshrined by the government of india in 1958 we had already seen one industrial policy resolution of 1948 and then subsequently in 1956 Uh, that industrial policy resolution, and we have also witnessed five-year plans starting from uh, 1951, 1951 to 56. The first five-year plan emphasized on agriculture. The second five-year plan emphasized on industry. I mean, 1956 to 1961. In the 1960s, India faced acute food shortages. Okay, that's why you will find the plan holidays. were there i mean for 3 years 1966 to 1969 india tried to build i mean india tried to apply all its technical artifacts to increase agricultural productivity okay that's how we witnessed a phenomenon called uh, the green revolution in the 1960s and uh, mid 1960s and then part and 1970s green revolution no doubt it increased agricultural productivity i mean hybrid seed was um, uh, introduced for the first time in agriculture in india but it also as we all know that it also increased regional disparity and so on we uh, 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 but but the context was to build more and more technology how to make science more and more applied okay then science for its own sake to science having applications had to be brought in this tr this transition had to take place as a consequence of which in the 1900 in 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 the year 1983 the government of india tried to formulate a technology policy statement okay the the preamble the preamble of the uh, the technology policy statement of 1983 of by the government of india suggests that political freedom must lead to economic independence and the alleviation of the burden of poverty we have we have regarded science and technology as the basis of economic progress as a result of uh, three decades of planning by 1983 i mean 50s 60s and 70s three decades of planning and the scientific policy resolution of 1958 we now have a strong agricultural and industrial base and a scientific manpower impressive in quality numbers and range of skills because by that time we had already witnessed the green revolution given clear cut objectives and the necessary support our science has shown its capacity to solve problems i mean real world problems the frontiers of knowledge are being extended at incredible speed It's opening up wholly new areas and introducing new concepts technological advances are influencing lifestyles as well as societal expectations the 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 huge and development of technology must relate to the people's aspirations our our own immediate needs in india in 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 1983 when the technology policy statement 
was enshrined by the government of India, where the attainment of technological self-reliance a swift and tangible improvement in the conditions of the weakest sections of the population and the speedy development of backward regions. Okay. India uh, as, as India is known for its uh, diversity, technology must suit local needs and to make an impact on the lives of ordinary citizens, technology must give constant thought to even small improvements which could make better and more cost effective uh, use of existing materials and methods of work. Okay. The, the development must be based on our own culture, okay. cultural specificities. The future depends on our ability to resist the imposition of technology which is obsolete and or unrelated to our specific requirements and of policies uh, which tie us to systems which uh, serve the purposes of uh, others rather than our own uh, and on our success in dealing with vested interests in our organizations namely uh, governmental, economic, social and even intellectual which bind us to outmoded systems and institutions. Okay? Technology must be viewed in the broadest sense covering the uh, agricultural and the services sectors. Uh, along with the obvious uh, uh, manufacturing sector. The, the manufacturing sector stretches over a wide spectrum ranging from village, small scale and cottage industries often based on traditional skills to modern heavy and sophisticated industries. The philosophy, the, 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 the philosophy of a mixed economy involves the operation of the private, public and joint sectors including those with uh, of foreign uh, equity participation. The, the directives, the, the, the directives uh, must clearly define systems for the choice of technology taking into account economic, social and cultural factors okay, uh, with technical considerations, indigenous development and support to technology and utilization of such technology, acquisition of technology through import and its subsequent absorption, adaptation and upgradation, ensuring competitiveness at international levels in all necessary areas and establishing links between the various elements concerned with generation of technology, its transformation into economically utilizable form, the, the sector responsible for production which is the user of such technology, I mean financial institutions uh, concerned with the resources needed for these activities and the promotional and uh, regulating uh, arms of the government. Okay? And, and this technology policy statement of 1983 is in response to the need for guidelines to cover this wide ranging and complex set of interrelated areas. Keeping in mind the capital scare, capital scares uh, uh, character of a developing economy, it aims at ensuring that our available natural endowments, especially human resources are optimally utilized for a continuing increase in the well-being of all sections of our population. We, 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 seek, uh, we seek technological advancement not for prestige or aggrandizement, but to solve our multifarious uh, uh, problems and to be able to safeguard our independence and our unity. Our our development, far from diminishing the enormous diversity of our regional traditions, should help us enrich them and to make the ancient wisdom of our nation more meaningful to our people. Our task is gigantic and calls for close coordination between the different departments of the central and state governments and also of those concerned at all levels with any sector of economic, scientific or technological activity and not least the understanding and involvement of the entire Indian populace. Okay? We, must, we must look particularly to young people to bring a scientific attitude of mind to bear on all our problems. Then, then if you look at the aims and objectives of uh, aims and objectives of the technology policy statement of 1983, what we generally find, 
is that the, the policy aimed to attain technological competence and self-reliance. It aims to it aimed to reduce vulnerability, particularly in strategic and critical areas. Uh, it aimed to provide the maximum gainful and satisfying employment to all strata of society with emphasis on the employment of women and weaker sections of the society to use traditional skills and capabilities making them commercially competitive, making the maximum use of indigenous resources, maybe handloom products hmm, uh, to, uh, to ensure the correct mix of uh, uh, the uh, to, to ensure the correct mix between mass products and technologies and production by the masses to ensure maximum development with minimum capital outlay to identify obsolescence of technology in use and uh, 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 and arrange for uh, the development of both equipment and technology to develop technologies which are internationally competitive, competitive particularly those with export potential to improve products and speedily through greater efficiency and fuller utilization of existing capabilities and enhance the quality and reliability of performance and output to reduce demands on energy, particularly energy from non-renewable uh, uh, sources to ensure harmony with the environment, preserve the ecological balance and improve the quality of the habitat to and to and finally, to recycle waste material and make full utilization of byproducts. Then, what are the, 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 the essential points of the technology policy statement of 1983? One, self-reliance, strengthening of the technological base. Secondly, thirdly, need for uh, prospective planning. I mean, in, in the case of employment, energy, efficiency and productivity, environment, I mean environment protection and sustainable development, development of indigenous technology. I mean, I mean importance of technology development, inventions, enhancing traditional skills and capabilities, ensuring timely availability, uh, increasing the demand for indigenous technology, uh, uh, design engineering, fiscal incentives, engineering consultancy, in-house research and development and so on. And then technology acquisition, when we say a, I mean within that we try to cover uh, I mean this policy statement technology policy statement try to cover mix of indigenous and imported technologies principles of acquisition and technology assessment what do we mean by the acquisition of technology the basic principles governing the acquisition of technology include import of technology foreign investment uh, uh, I mean which which will continue to be permitted uh, only on a selective basis. Okay? I mean government from time to time may identify and notify such areas of high national priority in respect of which procedures would be simplified further to ensure timely acquisition of the required technology okay? uh, uh, and there shall be a firm commitment uh, for absorption, adaptation and subsequent development of imported know-how through adequate uh, investment in research and development R and D to uh, which importers of technology will be expected to uh, contribute. Um, I mean, absorption of technology was import was uh, given prominence, technological information, technology transfer, I mean uh, diffusion of technology, uh, international competitiveness and technology exports, technical cooperation among developing countries was also required. Okay? developing countries when I say I mean including and mostly colonized nations uh, I mean uh, newly independent uh, newly politically independent nations okay legislative framework was developed to protect our own products uh, uh, and how to implement it okay and and the way the technology policy statement of 1983 envisioned Indian science and technology that must unlock the creative potential of our people of the Indian population and help in building uh, uh, the India of our dreams. Okay? That was the thing.
Then what we saw after 1983, there are, there are at least two events, at least two events which are very important, but we must keep those two events in mind when we discuss science and technology of the 90s and, and the 21st century, at least till today. One was the debacle of socialism in the erstwhile USSR in 18, 1989 and in 1991, India adopted the new economic policy of which I mean the principles of which oh, were liberalization, uh, privatization and globalization, shortly uh, known as uh, uh, LPG. In 1995, India became signatory to the WTO documents, negotiations, agreements. Then what happened earlier, I mean it does not imply that uh, India became uh, signatory to WTO uh, agreements uh, in vacuum, okay. but it was also a policy which was adopted by the government of India in 1991, the new economic policy. In 1970, India had its first patents act, which suggests that one can arrive at the same product by using diff different processes. Then the 1970 patents act in India was subject to only process patents. If I want to produce a refrigerator, if I want to produce this laptop, this camera, okay, I can produce this laptop or camera or refrigerator or television by using different processes. Okay. And in 1995, when India became signatory to WTO agreements, as a part of that agreement, after 10 years of that, uh, af after 10 years of the compliance with the WTO agreements, in 2005, India became, uh, I mean, India entered the phase of product patent regime. I mean, now you cannot arrive at the same product also by using different processes. That is why the new patents act of 2005 was subject to both processes as well as products. That is why you will find that the, the prices of medicines, the prices of seeds have increased by leaps and bounds after India adopted the product patent regime, India entered into the phase of product patent regime in 2005. We will we'll come to this point after discussing, I mean this is also important, I mean this is a background to, uh, uh, to initiate a discussion on the science and technology policy of 2003 uh, uh, by the government of India, whereby the government of India wanted to integrate both science and technology. Uh, you will find that uh, in 1958 uh, and 1983, science and technology were treated as separate entities, whereas in 2003, the government of India wanted to integrate both science and technology. Okay. In 2003, I mean the science and technology policy, uh, I mean the preamble of preamble uh, suggests that science and technology have, have profoundly influenced the course of human civilization. Science has provided us uh, with remarkable insights into the uh, world we live in. The scientific revolutions in the 20th century have led to many technologies which promise to herald wholly new eras in many fields as we stand today at the beginning of, of, of the 20th, 21st century. Uh, we have to ensure the fullest use of these developments for the well-being of our people. Science and technology have been an integral part of Indian civilization and culture over the past several millennia. That is what the, the, the document suggests. Okay. Science and technology have had uh, unprecedented impact on economic growth as well as social development. Knowledge has become a source of economic might and power. That is what we discussed in the context of the information society, has no, how knowledge is being treated as a commodity, how knowledge has been uh, transformed into power. Okay, that's why knowledge is power. Okay. 
and which and 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 this has led to increased restrictions on sharing of knowledge to new norms of intellectual property rights and to global trade and technology control regimes. Scientific and technological developments have deep ethical, legal and social implications. When we, when we look at the, the, the policy itself, okay, uh, the government of India enunciates certain objectives of its uh, uh, of, of, of this policy, I mean of this science, science and technology policy of 2003. I mean to, to ensure uh, the policy uh, maintains, uh, uh, maintained that, uh, that uh, may, uh, I mean the policy aimed to ensure um, um, that the message of science reaches every Indian citizen whether woman or man, young, old, um, uh, so that we can we, we advance scientific temper, emerge as a progressive and enlightened society and make it possible for all our people to participate fully in the development of uh, science and technology and its application for human welfare. Indeed, science and technology uh, must be fully integrated with all spheres of national life. To, to ensure food, agricultural, nutritional, environmental, water, health and energy security of the people on a sustainable basis. To, to mount a direct uh, uh, and sustained effort on the alleviation of poverty, enhancing livelihood, uh, security, removal of hunger and malnutrition, reduction of drudgery and regional imbalances both rural as well as urban and generation of employment by using scientific and technological capabilities along with our traditional knowledge pool. This will call for, uh, uh, for the uh, generation of and, and screening of all relevant technologies, their widespread dissemination through networking and support for the vast unorganized sector of our economy to vigorously uh, foster scientific research in universities and other academic scientific and engineering institutions uh, and attract the brightest young persons to careers in science and technology by conveying a sense of excitement concerning the advancing frontiers and by creating suitable employment opportunities for them. Also to build and maintain cent centers of excellence which will raise the level of work in selected areas to the highest international standards. To promote the empowerment of women in all science and technology activities and ensure their full and equal participation. Okay? Uh, to, to provide necessary autonomy and freedom of functioning for all academic and R and D institutions, so that an ambience for truly creative work is encouraged while ensuring at the same time that the science and technology enterprise in the country is fully committed to its social responsibilities and commitments. To use the full potential of uh, uh, modern science and technology to protect, preserve, uh, evaluate, update and value to and uh, um, utilize the extensive knowledge required for the over the long civilizational experience of India. Okay? To, to accomplish uh, national strategic and security related objectives by using the latest advances in science and technology. To encourage uh, research uh, and innovation in the areas of relevance of the economy and society, particularly by promoting uh, close and productive interaction between private and public institutions in science and technology. Sectors uh, such as agriculture, particularly soil, water management, human and animal nutrition, fisheries, water, health, education, industry, energy, including renewable energy, communication and transportation would be accorded highest priority. Key leverage technologies such as information technology, biotechnology, material science and technology, nanotechnology would be, I mean nanotechnology came up um, uh, later, I mean at that time it was mentioned would be uh, given special importance. To establish an intellectual property right regime, IPR regime, which maximizes the incentives for the gen generation and protection of intellectual property by 
all its inventors. Uh, the 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 uh, this IPR regime, the this policy uh, maintained, would also provide a strong, supportive, and comprehensive policy environment for for speedy and effective domestic commercialization of such inventions, as so as to be maximal in the public interest. To ensure in an era in which information is key to the development of science and technology that all efforts are made to have high speed access to information both in terms of quality and quantity at, afford at, at affordable costs and also create digitized valid and use, uh, usable content of Indian origin. To encourage research and application for forecasting prevention and mitigation of natural hazards, uh, particularly floods, cyclones, earthquakes, droughts and landslides. To promote international science and technology cooperation towards uh, achieving the goals of national development and security and make it a key element of our international relations. And finally, to integrate scientific knowledge with insights from other disciplines and ensure fullest involvement of scientists and technologists in national importance, so that the spirit and methods of scientific inquiry permeate deeply into all areas of all areas of public policy making. Okay? I mean this is where we got into, I mean we were involved in this, uh, uh, this IPR regime, uh, I mean uh, we must innovate and we are innovating not for public use, but to protect our innovation. Okay? I mean the, the commercial, the political uh, dimensions must be understood okay? and by, by uh, as a consequence of which okay, uh, we, we, um, we made a shift from, uh, from the science and technology policy of 2003 to, to the science, technology and innovation policy of 2013 and the background of innovation and the background that, that uh, uh, the context, the background to the context of innovation must be understood in the context of uh, uh, the WTO provisions on the IPR, intellectual property rights. I mean World Trade Organization uh, provisions um, on the intellectual property rights and India has been compliant with the US dictated IPR regime precisely because we will discuss how till now we have not yet been able to build an independent science policy in India. Okay? That is a different story altogether. Either we are influenced by, uh, either we were influenced by the erstwhile USSR uh, 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 after uh, India's independence, and now, uh, and and uh, perhaps perhaps uh, after uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, uh, we are more and more influenced by uh, the North American hegemonic science policies. Before discussing the science, technology and innovation policy of 2013, quickly we will discuss how we are, we are, we have gotten into, we have, we are involved in this regime where trademark, uh, um, um, uh, copyright, patents, okay, they are, they are, they are, now they have become the decisive factors for the way in which we must carry out. Uh, our science, uh, our, uh, uh, we must practice our science, we must uh, practice our technology, we must develop our technology. Okay? I mean when you look at a trademark, I mean trademark can be discussed at two levels, I mean one is source identification and the other quality assurance and when I say source identification, it must be, I mean it must be distinguished from other goods and services, when I talk about quality assurance. I must look at the quality about what the product is, trademark owner should have uh, control over the quality of the product. Trademark, copyright, patent are the same? No, their purposes are different, their requirements are different, 
there these terms themselves are different. A trademark is always or oh, is uh, I mean uh, that is why I said uh, are, are all of them same? No, a trademark is always a word, no. Then what is a trademark? A trademark under the trade aspects I mean the, uh, under the under the trips I mean the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. A trademark may be words, numerals, figurative elements, combination of colors or any combination thereof. Trademark in the context of United States of America, it may be a word, a name, symbol, device or any combination thereof. To identify and distinguish goods from those manufactured or sold by others and to indicate the source of the goods. Then what is a trademark in Asia? Now, any sign with distinctiveness which may consist of, but not limit to word or letter or character, device, uh, symbol, color, three dimensional shape, uh, 3D shape, uh, uh, motion, hologram, sound or any combination thereof. A trademark may be, do you think a trademark uh, 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 will say fragrance, a perfume, okay? fragrance uh, cannot be a trademark. Okay? Can registered mark and trademark be used interchangeably? No, because trademark is intended to be used as a trademark. Uh, I mean, trademark is a generic term that can never be registered. However, some marks become genericized because of improper use. Suppose I want to make a photocopy of uh, 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 of, uh, of of a study material. But uh, we generally say, ah, please do the Xerox, please Xerox it, but that is wrong. Xerox is the name of a company. Okay? We must say that we can you uh, we want to make photocopies. Okay? We uh, very often say you Google it, but actually Google is the name of a company. Okay? We must say search it. That is why we always say that is why some marks have become uh, genericized because of improper use. There are five types of marks, fanciful mark, arbitrary mark, suggestive mark, descriptive mark and generic mark. Fanciful mark is a coined term, I mean Microsoft, HTC and so on. Arbitrary mark, existing term, but arbitrary association with goods like Apple, Apple Mac, Apple. Suggestive mark, which requires some imagination, I mean iPad. Descriptive mark, which describes the product plus secondary meaning is equal to registrability, whereas generic mark can never be registered. That is why I initially I said registered mark and trademark cannot be used interchangeably. Fanciful mark, arbitrary mark and suggestive mark are inherently distinctive. I mean some creativity is involved in this, but descriptive mark and generic mark are characterized by distinctiveness, but not inherent. A descriptive mark may become distinctive by obtaining secondary meaning through use and trademark rights, I mean uh, one is territorial. Okay? I mean, uh, when you uh, register your trademark, I mean it may be domestic, may be international. Under domestic, there are common laws versus state registration versus uh, federal registration and so on. When you come to international uh, registration, there are three stages, home registration, international registration, national registration, for example, Madrid protocol in Spain. Okay? Trademark rights are conditioned on use. What is your intent to use? What is the purpose to use? One has to use trademark, I mean use for trademark purpose, I mean that source identification and non-use of trademark may result in its cancellation. Further, one has to use trademark right, one cannot alter one's trademark. Using altered trademark may constitute infringement. Okay? Having, having quickly browsed the essential components of trademark copyright and patents. Okay. What are the essential characteristics of, what are the criteria for attaining patents? 
no, novelty one non obviousness two and industrial utility applicability three okay when you when we discuss these these aspects we must keep this in mind i mean when we when we when we move on to discussing the science technology and innovation policy of 2013 uh, by the government of india we must keep these technicalities in mind wta provisions on ipr how india has become a signatory to wto agreements what is a process patent regime what is a product patent regime trademarks copyright uh, patents and so on because innovation has become quite integral to uh, though innovation was very much integral was very much integral to the formulation of science and technology policy of 2003 but here innovation has been made absolutely explicit in the context of the science technology and innovation policy of 2013 by the government of india in 2010 uh, at the indian science congress association i mean uh, uh, congress conference uh, the then prime minister of india declared 2010 to 20 as the decade of innovations and formed the national innovation council okay the the this STI policy the science technology and innovation policy of 2013 has emerged as the major uh, i mean uh, these these three aspects in fact science technology and innovation they have emerged as the major drivers of socio economic development globally india of the 21st century is an aspiring country faster sustainable and inclusive growth is india's aspiration science technology and innovation leading to applications of products of research and development i mean r&d uh, i mean which will need to play defining roles the large demographic dividend and talent pool okay of the country offer unique opportunities the national science technology and innovation enterprise for earning for itself a central position in national development through its excellence relevance and performance then what is innovation okay scientific i mean innovation is all about i mean uh, scientific research converts money into knowledge and innovation converts knowledge into wealth innovation is more than mere conversion of knowledge into a workable technology it implies science and technology so it it implies a science and technology solution that is successfully deployed in the economy or society and india has hitherto accorded little importance to this aspect there is now an urgent need to invigorate this aspect of the national you know, science technology and uh, innovation enterprise okay that was that was mentioned in the science technology and innovation policy of 2013 the the science technology and innovation policy of 2013 is in furtherance of the declaration and aims to bring fresh perspectives to bear on innovation in the changing context the policy thus seeks to focus on both people for science and science for people and combine the benefits of excellence and relevance india's science technology and innovation system needs to deliver solutions to address the pressing national challenges of energy and food security nutrition affordable healthcare environment water sanitation and above all employment the the key elements of the science technology uh, and innovation policy are to promote uh, uh, proliferation of uh, scientific temper amongst all sections of the society to enhance skill for applications of science among the young from all social strata to make careers in science research and innovation attractive to the brightest minds to establish a uh, world class r&d infrastructure for gaining global leadership in some select frontier areas of science to to position india uh, to situate india to locate india among the top 5 global scientific powers by 2020 to 
to link contributions of science research and uh, innovation systems with inclusive economic growth agenda and combine priorities of excellence with relevance to migrate R and D outputs into commercial applications uh, by replicating uh, the, the uh, by replicating hitherto successful models as well as establishment of new structures uh, to facilitate science and technology based high risk innovations through new mechanisms and to trigger changes in the mindset and value systems to recognize, respect and reward performances which create wealth from science and technology derived knowledge. Okay. Now, what, what we have learned from the science, technology and innovation policy? Uh, you can look at uh, the reviews which uh, were published in Economic and Political Weekly, in Current Science and so on. I mean, uh, Professor V. V. Krishna uh, wrote um, uh, that how uh, the, the way science, technology and innovation policy of 2013 by the government of India has been prepared. It is only high on hopes, but, but it, is not, it is not sustainable precisely because of the ways in which they have been designed. Okay. You can, uh, we will we'll give you uh, the links to these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, lectures and in the next lecture, what we are going to do? We are going to discuss, uh, I mean we are going to have a brief overview of the entire course starting from the cognitive questions, ethical questions, methodological questions, uh, politi I mean uh, technological shaping of society, social shaping of technology, uh, 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 the uh, reception of modern science in India and science policies in India uh, uh, in the next lecture and there we will end the course. Thank you.